بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم أعزائي الطلبة I will talk about the nasal trauma or nasal fracture septal hematoma and septal abscess The external part of the nose consists of two pyramids the bony pyramid and the cartilaginous pyramid The bony pyramid consists of the nasal bone and the frontal process of the maxillae. This is the nasal bone and the frontal process of the maxillae. This is the nasal bone and the frontal process of the maxillae. And this is the cartilaginous pyramid consists of the upper lateral cartilage and the lower lateral cartilage. The bony septum, the septum consists of two parts, the bony septum, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the vomer, and the cartilaginous septum, the quadrilateral cartilage. And this is the nasal bone. Direct trauma to the nose or face is usually from a punch, a clash of heads, head coalition, or a fall onto the nose. In patient with a nasal fracture, always consider a head or cervical spine injury. When you manage a patient with a trauma to the nose, you should exclude any associated head or cervical spine injury. The sequelae of the trauma to the nose depends on two things. Number one, the direction of the force, and number two, the severity of that force. So we have frontal blow, and the sequelae of this blow depends on the severity of the force. A. If the severity of the force to the nose, of the frontal blow to the nose, is mild, so the lower part of the nasal bones, the thinner part of the nasal bones, easily gives way. B. In mild to severe frontal blow will cause open book fracture. The nasal septum is collapsed and nasal bones split out. This is called open book fracture. And see, with the greater force, there is a comminution of nasal bones and even the frontal process of maxillae with the flattening and widening of the nasal dorsum and collapse of the nose. When the force is lateral, when the blow to the nose is lateral, it may cause either a unilateral depression of nasal bone on the same side, on the affected side, or B, with a severe lateral blow to the nose, cause fracture of both nasal bones and septum with deviation of nasal bridge to the opposite side. Nasal fractures are often accompanied by injuries of nasal septum in the form of buckled, dislocated, or comminuted nasal septum. This picture shows the sequelae of a trauma to the nose. With the frontal blow, which can cause compression of the nasal septum, splaying out of the nasal bones with formation of open book fracture. And if it's the force is very strong, 
frontal blow to the nose, it will cause comminution of both nasal bones with compression and collapse of the nose and widening of the nasal bridge with, settle, with settling of the nose. The lateral blow to the nose, mild blow to the nose can cause depression of the nasal bone on the affected side with severe lateral force it will cause deviation of the nasal bridge towards the opposite side. Clinical features of nasal trauma Swelling of the nose appears within a few hours and may obscure details of examination. Nasal deformity according to the direction and severity of the force to the nose. The nose may be depressed from the front or side or the whole of the nasal pyramid deviated to one side. Epistaxis due to mucosal laceration at the time of injury or at the time of reduction. Nasal obstruction due to septal deviation or septal hematoma. Laceration of the nasal skin with exposure of nasal bones and cartilage may be seen in compound fractures. Tenderness repetus and mobility of fractured fragments with periorbital ecchymosis. This is picture of nasal trauma with deviation of the nasal bridge towards the right side with lacerated wound at the dorsum of the nose and periorbital ecchymosis. This is another case of lateral trauma with deviation of the nasal bridge toward the opposite side and this picture after reduction. Diagnosis of trauma to the nose or nasal fracture is a clinical diagnosis. X-ray may or may not show fracture. X-ray are not required to make the diagnosis but may be helpful in either A, or number one, excluding any bony f facial fractures, two, a proof of injury in subsequent lit litigation for medical legal point of view. CT scan is used in severe injury when there is associated injury to the paranasal sinuses, to the orbit, to the to the head. Patient should not be dismissed as having no fracture because X-ray did not reveal it. The absence of a fracture line in plain X-ray does not exclude the presence of nasal fracture. And the X-rays should include water's view, the usual X-ray of the paranasal sinuses right and left lateral view. This is the lateral x-ray of the nasal bone showing the nasal bone, the thick part, and this is the thinner part of the nasal bone and frontal process of the maxilla. Lateral x-ray of the nose showing fracture in the thinner part of the nasal bone due to mild frontal blow to the nose. This lateral x-ray of the nasal bones showing a fracture of the thick part of the nasal bone and the frontal process of the maxilla. And this is the axial CT scan of the paranasal sinuses and the nose shows a non-displaced nasal bone fracture and depressed nasal bone fracture. 
it is difficult to reduce a nasal fracture after two weeks because it heals by that time. And the healed nasal deformities resulting from nasal trauma can be corrected by rhinoplasty or septo rhinoplasty. Healing is faster in children and therefore early reduction is imperative in children. Treatment of nasal trauma, simple fractures without displacement need no treatment. If there is no deformity, there is no need for any treatment. Presence of edema interferes with accurate reduction by closed methods. Therefore, the best time to reduce a fracture is before the appearance of edema or after it has subsided, which is usually in five to seven days. We start with number one, closed reduction. A, depressed fractures of nasal bones can be reduced by a straight blunt elevator guided by digital manipulation from outside, like in this picture. B. Laterally displaced nasal bridge can be reduced by firm digital pressure in the opposite direction. C. Impacted fragments require disimpaction with Walsham or Ash forceps before realignment. And this picture shows the disimpaction with Walsham forceps. And you see the outer plate of the Walsham forceps is covered by a plastic tube to prevent injury to the skin during this impaction. D-septal fractures. Septal fractures are reduced by ash forceps. Septal hematoma must be drained as early as possible. Certain septal injuries can be better reduced by open methods, by conventional septoblasty. Unstable fractures require intranasal packing and external sibilant. Open reduction is indicated when closed method when closed methods fail. And this picture shows the open reduction. The complication of nasal trauma are poor cosmetic results and nasal deviation and deformity. Nasal obstruction due to either septal hematoma or septal deviation, epistaxis at the time of injury or during reduction, septal complications like septal hematoma, septal abscess, septal deviation, and even septal perforation. One of the most complications of the nasal trauma is septal hematoma and usually occurs in children. Any child presented to you with nasal trauma, you should exclude the presence of septal hematoma by just elevation of the nasal tip by finger and you will see the ballooning of the nasal septum with a hematoma due to accumulation of the blood between the fractured septum and the mucopericondrial covers. And the management of septal hematoma by drainage as early as possible to prevent the conversion of the septal hematoma into a septal abscess. Septal hematoma, if it is left for more than three to five days, it will 
convert into a septal abscess. The drainage in children should be under GA by a horizontal incision to avoid disruption of the mucociliary function. The drainage of the hematoma, insertion and fixation of the corrugated drain and bilateral nasal packing with antibiotic cover. The most common complication of septal hematoma is septal abscess. And the most common cause of septal abscess is the septal hematoma. The clinical picture of septal abscess is similar to that of the septal hematoma in addition to the presence of fever and pain and tenderness over the dorsum of the nasal bridge. And the most common pathogen is staph aureus. And the treatment is similar to that of the hematoma, septal hematoma, by drainage as early as possible to prevent the complication of the septal abscess, which is maybe a cavernous sinus thrombosis and necrosis and collapse of the necrosis of the septal cartilage and collapse of the nose. The treatment by drainage under GA and drainage similar to that of the septal hematoma with uh, insertion of corrugated drain, bilateral nasal packing with antibiotic cover. Uh, the most common pathogen is staph aureus, so we should use anti-staph antibiotics. Good luck and see you.